Welcome to the NTEB Prophecy News Podcast with your host and Bible teacher, Jeffrey Greider. Rightly divided, dispensationally correct, and standing on the authority of the King James Holy Bible. This program is brought to you by NowTheEndBegins.com. And good afternoon, everybody. Happy Monday and welcome to this edition of the Prophecy News Podcast today. It's Invasion America, as our leaders conspire to allow endless flow of illegal immigrants free access to cross the border. If you thought that the border situation to the south was bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. Chinese nationals are now pouring through in record numbers, bringing communism and who knows what else with them. Regardless of nationality, the vast majority of these illegals are military-age men in their 20s and early 30s. Anyone want to take a guess why that would be? If you guess that it would be to form an army, I think you'd be right. Psalm 55, verse 10. Day and night they go about it upon the walls thereof. Mischief also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Right here, right now in America, there is a bipartisan border bill being debated that is absolutely horrendous, which is why it's been crafted in virtual secrecy. All of the usual suspects like Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer are working as co-conspirators to hatch this border betrayal. One of the key pieces of this legislation is that it will allow for up to 8,500 illegals to cross the border every single day before any type of emergency measure is taken to stop it. Now, just in case you were wondering, 8,500 people per day is 2,000, um, it is It's a quarter million people per month, or it is three million people per year. All of um, those people coming in through holes in the border. America is being invaded, but it's at the hands of our leaders who have betrayed us. And we warned you about this 15 years ago, about the coming betrayal of America by her leaders. And we're going to talk about all those things today here on the Prophecy News Podcast. But before we do, before we get into any of that wild and crazy stuff, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Let's pray for lost souls. Let's ask for his blessing. Let's lift up our brothers and sisters who need a healing today. Heavenly Father, Today we pray for lost souls, we pray for Sarah and Eric and Becky Jacobs, Greg and Melissa Price, Glenn Clark, and Jeanette's family, Cheyenne, Bridget, Tony, Dion, Matthew, Samuel, grand babies up in Maine, Derek, Adam, and Roland Carrier and their families, my brothers John and David, Jesse and his mom, Rachel's dad, Ralph, unsaved Catholic family members of the Bolton family. Jordan Shapiro for salvation, David Peck, Susan Weirs Bicky asking prayer for her daughters Valerie and Marie, and her husband Greg and son Greg Jr. Jeffrey's kids Tyler, Tevin, daughter in law Caitlin, and grandsons Logan, Ronnie, and Russell. Jeanette and Bob have unsaved Catholic family members. Connie has three unsaved children. Brandy, unsaved family members over in Colorado. Uh, Rita continues to pray for her son, Dan, to get saved. Ron needs salvation. Spray of Sunshine Sons, Daniel, Patrick, and Brian. Shannon praying for Lori W. and Brian M. Jan Lacker's son, David. Barbara praying for Robert, Naomi, Blake, Alex, Ethan, Raquel, Janet, and Shandell. Nicole Zimmer praying for her best friend and family, the Meads and the Cooks. Cheyenne praying for Barry K., Terry C., Alan G., Melody, Nick, Rick, and Beth. Karen's children, Jason and Tiffany. Grandchildren, Summer, Austin, and Emmett. Barbara's son, Jody. Mark Sherlock, praying for Savannah and Mother Stephanie. Werner Bukes for Bob and Abby. Junie Grant and their dad. Uh, Kathy Hughes' son, Zane. Lulu has unsaved family members. Miles has unsaved family members. Many of the children and grandchildren in the Giacomino family for salvation. Dawn D. praying for David, Paul Caulfield, for Father Fred and brother-in-law Frank. 
Ramona Hayes asking prayer for Kimberly, her daughter, uh, for salvation and deliverance from alcohol. Also for grandchildren, William, Jason, David, and Amanda. Patrick praying for Jack and Aaron. Chelsea P. praying for her ex-husband, his parents, his sister, and her husband. Adam's wife, Shanna, Lori B. Shira Shine is praying for children, Scott, Sherry, and Nicole. Lori Ann's grandfather, Irvin, Mark Fennell, and Kevin Thompson praying for his dad, Tim, to get saved. People who need a healing today. Uh, my good friend, Kathy Accurso, she sent me a text message after the Bible study last night. I am in the ICU in North Carolina with my mom. I just got here today, staying by her bed overnight. She is on a ventilator. She's in multiple organ failure and has a DNR. That is, do not resuscitate. It's time to say goodbye. And I wanted to reach out and uh, please pray for Kathy's mom. For she, she saved and she knows the Lord. Uh, please pray for Kathy's mom for a a, a smooth, comfort filled home going. Pray for Kathy and her husband and her her family, uh, her daughter, and uh, just pray that God's peace and grace would be in that hospital room in North Carolina in the ICU right now, and that Kathy's mom would just feel oh, the sweet arms of Jesus as it's time for her to go home, as it will be for all of us one day if the Lord tarries. Uh, Lori Ann, please pray for my mom, Joyce. She's starting chemotherapy this Friday. Uh, That's my mother-in-law. Please keep her in your prayers. Krista, battling a massive tumor in her chest, and doctors have discovered three new additional tumors. Um, The family has moved back to where she is originally from, and please pray for Krista, her husband Scott, and their four boys. Uh, Debbie Mathias's daughter-in-law, Abby, had a second stroke. Uh, please pray for a, a complete healing and full recovery. Marie C. in Philadelphia has not been feeling well lately. Um, she goes at, at warp speed all the time. Uh, please keep street preacher Marie in your prayers. Uh, she's doing a great job over there on the streets of Philadelphia. Uh, my brother Jimmy in rehab. Uh, please, please keep him on your prayer list. He needs it. Um, Amanda Emaw, possible return of cancer. Thomas, experiencing profound discouragement, needs to hear from the Lord. Uh, Annetta had a stroke in 2022, and we've been praying. Um, we have prayed for her on every broadcast since her stroke happened, and we will continue to do so until she is completely healed. Um, David, my mom, Laura, had a stroke. Please pray. Sadie has heart-related issues. Derek O'Reilly has anxiety. Um, Marcia Swanson has myelagic encephalomyelitis. It is a neuroimmune disease. George H. with health issues. James Rivette, recovering from addiction and mental health issues. Robert Wiley, battling ALS disease. Uh, Robert, I haven't heard from you since about twenty, the end of 2022 when we spoke on the phone. If you're listening... Uh, please reach out in some way and let me know how you're doing. Uh, We pray for you on every program. Jill Puckett is losing her vision. Paul Caulfield battling type 1 sugar diabetes. Ron Alliston has cancer. Brooke Kettlecamp is battling and beating autism. Dan Kane, please pray for my wife Roxy with MS and for son Jonathan. Rob's friend Mike has MS. Ida Karulik has cancer. Mark Seals has numerous health issues. Roz has asthma and scoliosis. Tony is blind, has cancer, and his wife is divorcing him. Maddie Luck has Luli body dementia, and her daughter Michelle has neuropathy and fibromyalgia. Tracy has severe arthritis, diabetes type 2, fatty liver, among other things. Michelle Christian has bone cancer. Melissa B.'s husband, Brian, has stage 3 kidney disease. Ricky Gouda in the, in the Netherlands needs prayer for her eyesight. Her daughter, Nortja, needs surgery on her thyroid. Please pray for that. Casey is a woman with lupus and kidney issues. 
Jane would like us to pray for the salvation of her parents and brother and for her husband who has a, and I had never heard of this before, it's called schwannoma. And it is a disease along the peripheral nerves of the spine and it causes tumors. Really, really nasty sounding disease. Um, And he has it and we're praying for a healing for him. Brooke's sister Ashley has MS. Jackie H. needs God's favor regarding custody of her son. A lady named Katka has ALS. Um, Dave Evans' friend Manuela has bone cancer. Stacy going through a divorce. Please pray that she makes the right decisions. Terry Horn has had several strokes and needs a walker. Casey says, please keep my husband on your prayer list. He is a severe alcoholic and not saved. Matthew Morrow is battling alcohol and um, please pray for deliverance for him as well as wisdom for his parents, Dan and Peggy. Tom Rance has been recovering from a stroke and a severe brain bleed. Julius is grateful in the Philippines that we continue to pray for mom Erlinda and niece Rochelle for health issues. Brooke's friend's child named Birdie, age four, had a stroke and a seizure. Please pray for little four-year-old Birdie. Jeanette's sister uh, is recovering from eye surgery. And uh, Jeanette says, praise the Lord. Her vision is not good enough yet to drive, but it's getting better. And we're very happy to keep her on the list. Wayne uh, needs prayer for cancer, unsure if he is saved. Ashley DeShields, praise report, recovering from West Nile virus. And we're very happy to hear that. We will continue to pray until you tell us that you are all better. Uh, Teresa G, suffering from macular degeneration. That's what Dr. Ruckman suffered from in the last years of his life. Shira Shine, please keep family issues in your prayer. And please pray for salvation and healing for my children. Amen. Uh, Linda Benjamin would like prayer for overall health and for memory problems. Berta and Mike Crabb are having health issues and need a healing. Ladies who are expecting. This is now the smallest list that we've ever had since we started it with Erad and Elizabeth's child Maranatha all those many years ago. Um, Ladies who are expecting, Christy Ireland, and she's doing great. Char's daughter, Miranda. Sandra Carbonera's friend, Jordan P. Stephanie Juliana. Sarah Ann Severson. And Spray of Sunshine's uh, son and his girlfriend who are expecting twins. From the chat room today, Catherine B., Every time I see Catherine B. in the chat room, it warms my heart and it reminds me to stay in the fight. Catherine B. has multiple health issues. Um, She listens to these programs while having dialysis and uh, she just... She just loves the Lord and she just wants a healing. And um, she says today, feeling okay, treatment going well, two hours to go, praying for all to stay stable. And anytime that you feel like getting out of the fight, anytime you feel that the world and the flesh and the devil are overwhelming you and you want to quit, you just remember Catherine B. And uh, she doesn't quit. (laughs) And she's here just about every time that we broadcast and she battles a whole laundry list of physical ailments and um, she is in the fight and she is glad to be saved and glad to be serving and so um, Catherine B you are a blessing hang in there Dana I need a prayer for healing of my blood sugar Uh, Heath Lord help me to walk in the spirit not in the flesh amen to that Uh, Karen, please pray for me for today's podcast, for God to give me comfort and peace in his will and the way he has to allow all this to come into play for his prophecies to be fulfilled. As this upsets me, what our leaders are doing to this country, betraying their own countrymen, citizens. Amen. And I will agree with that. Absolutely. Um, It is upsetting. 
It absolutely is, and we're going to talk about that today on the podcast. Heavenly Father, we're glad, we're grateful to be saved today. And Lord, we woke up. (laughs) I mean, we wouldn't be listening to this podcast if everybody listening didn't wake up today, and you woke us all up today. But we are aware of the 155,000 plus people who did not wake up today that were alive yesterday. And um, Lord, that is a sobering thought. So we're glad and we say thank you for waking us up today. Um, There was food on my table. I had leftover pasta from last night. Um, It was delicious. And I warmed it up and just a quick little bowl of pasta with meat sauce. And um, I was very glad and grateful to have that. Did you have toast today? Maybe you had an apple Maybe you had an English breakfast or something like that. But did you have something? If you did, thank the Lord. And Father God, we thank you for the food on the table, the clothes on our back, the roof over our head. And uh, you're a good God and we're happy to serve you. And we commit this time to you and ask you to lead and guide and work and move. Father, these people... um, They need a healing. Kathy Accurso's mom is getting ready to come home and see you. And so, Lord, for all the people with strokes and heart attacks and brain bleeds and diseases and and people who need a place to live and people who need finances and people who need a job and uh, just whatever the case may be, Lord, we ask you to heal and work and provide and... um, we're just so we're just grateful, God. Thank you. And we commit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, why was I so tongue-tied at the start of the podcast today? I was so tongue-tied because we have been very heavily focused on the amazing new NTEB jukebox. We've talked about it for years. And... um Well, Lori and I got the ball rolling on Saturday, um, and we launched it yesterday, and we've been fine-tuning it all last night and all this morning, and we've been very heavily focused on the jukebox because this contains, there's 77 songs so far, and they are songs that you have absolutely heard dozens, if not hundreds of times over the past 12 plus years that we've been broadcasting. The NTEB jukebox is the NTEB playlist. And we have gotten so many compliments over the years for the good, quality, godly, old-fashioned, hymn-based music that we play and well we finally got it together and put it on spotify it's called the nteb jukebox and all you have to do is look if you have a mobile device just download the spotify app it's free and just type in nteb jukebox and download it to your mobile device now i understand that there's a lot of people who do not use a mobile device. And that's fine. So what we did, for those of you who want to listen to it on your desktop computer, on your laptop, or your pad, um, we have placed an NTEB jukebox player on every single article that we have ever published All you have to do is go to the comment section and it's on the top of the comment section of every article that we have ever published. Plus, if you look at the chat room page and you refresh that page right at the top on top of the Spreaker podcast player, you will see the NTEB jukebox. So you don't have to go to Spotify if you don't want to. You don't have to download the Spotify app if you don't want to. All you have to do is go to nowtheendbegins.com. It's on over 10,000 pages. And um, we will be adding to this jukebox 
on a daily basis. But just keep in mind that this jukebox reflects the music of Now the End Begins. Um, And these are songs that we have played here that people have come to love over the years. Um, This is not, you know, we're not trying to have thousands of songs. We are trying to have songs that glorify the Lord, uh, songs that we incorporate with all of our broadcasts. And um, those are the type of songs that will be in the jukebox. Heath says the power of one needs to be on there. It absolutely does. And we are getting to that. But um, please enjoy this NTEB jukebox. And uh, right now there is... Um, five hours, let me see if I get the exact amount here. Right now we have loaded five hours and 14 minutes of straight music for you to enjoy. Five hours and 14 minutes, and we will be adding to it as we go. So, um, thank you for the wonderful response to that jukebox. And that's what... (laughs) That's what had me all kerfluffled this morning at the start of the podcast um, because I have been so thinking about the code for this jukebox and and the graphical look and the design and the songs. And um, Jeanette says, no hell song music. <laughs> Let me just tell you as I take a sip of coffee, we will never knowingly play a Bethel song, a Hillsong song, or any of that junk by Stephen Furtick. Um, That is our promise to you. We will never knowingly play a Hillsong song, a Bethel music song, or anything that is from that emergent church. And if you find that we have one of those songs in our playlist... I promise you it got there by mistake and you let us know and we'll have it removed immediately. Uh, We are not trying to appeal to the world. We're trying to be a blessing to the body of Christ and to make these songs available to the body of Christ. Um, and, And that's the point behind the jukebox. So please pray that... um, uh, uh, people will be blessed by this and that NTE beers all over the world will get to enjoy the wonderful songs and hymns that we've been playing here for the last 12 years whenever they want to hear them. Um, well, amen. Angela, do you have Paul Wilbur on the playlist? Yes, we do. And we have 77 songs so far. We play Paul Wilbur all the time. Um, Every time that we have the shofar playing, some of you don't know that, but every single, and I'll get to the podcast in just a minute, um, but every single time you have heard us play the shofar on this program, 99.9% of that time, it has been the shofar playing of Paul Wilbur. And um, the very first theme that we ever had going all the way back to 2011. Let me see in the chat room with a show of hands, how many people have been listening to this program for at least a decade Let me see in the chat room how many people have been listening to um, any of the programs that we do for at least the past 10 years. Let me see how many of the old folks we have here. Jimmy, Rapture 57, Dana, Lulu, Jeanette, (laughs) Angela, um, um, Karen. So... um, Angela asks, do we play Paul Wilbur? Well, listen to this. This is Paul Wilbur.
יברכך אדוני וישמרך. יאר אדוני פניו אליך ויחונקה. יישא אדוני פניו אליך וישם לך שלום. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We used to have a listener back in the very beginning of Now the End Begins, and her name was Anna, Anna Duffy Shank. And her favorite Bible verse was Numbers 6, verses um, 25 through 26. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his faith shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. So the very first piece of music that we ever, ever played on any program going back to 2011 was Paul Wilbur doing the song that I just played for you. So, uh, yes, we will be having a fair amount of Paul Wilbur music. Uh, Lulu says, I remember Anna. Um, Anna, Lulu, Jeanette, Raylene. Um, uh, uh, These are all the original NTE beers. And so, this jukebox, this jukebox is music... um, that we have played for 12 years and we want to make it available. And um, again, we just hope and pray that it will be a blessing to everybody. And with that, I almost hate to talk about the border bill and the border betrayal. I mean, man, I could just talk about the stuff we've been talking about for the next hour and I would be fine with that. Um, But we got to... We got to get into the podcast today. We got to talk about these things. I don't want to talk about these things, um, but we got to talk about these things. Now, for those of you who remember what the Now the End Begins website used to look like back in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012 was the last year for the old look. Back in 2011, we went from being a blog to being an actual website with a database, and uh, we got fancy back in 2011. Um, But the original NTEB website, and the only place that you can see it is on the Wayback Machine, and I want to show you what the banner for the original Now the End Begins website looked like. Up in the upper left-hand corner, it had Joel 3.16. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. On the right-hand side, it had a quote from Daniel 9.27. It had all sorts of great graphic images about the fall of America. It had Jesus coming in the clouds and it has the two witnesses blowing the shofar. But I want to draw your attention to what we wrote, what I wrote in the bottom left-hand corner back in 2009. It said this, the coming betrayal of America. For generations, the Bible has warned of the coming end of days, and you are now living in that time. America, a nation raised up by the hand of God to spread the gospel and to be a beacon of freedom for people around the world, is about to be forever silenced by those sworn to protect her, her leaders. So I want to point out to you, I want to point out to you, that this ministry, Now the End Begins, the very first graphic that we ever made is we warned you about the coming betrayal of America. It hadn't happened yet. But when they brought on Obama and Biden, that was the start of everything. And you could see the direction that everything was going to go in. 
and it went in that direction. And here in 2024, it is in that direction. And just about everything that we told you was coming, it has arrived. It is here. It is all part of something called Build Back Better, the Great Reset, the Fourth Industrial Revolution. Uh, Take a listen to this clip of various world leaders over the last four years talking about the coming New World Order. It's a very pertinent question to ask, how do we build back better? To build back better or whatever. We have a chance to reset the clock and build back better than before. To build back better than before. Remember the the terrible damage of COVID as we try to build back from this uh, global pandemic. Joe Biden calls it build back better. Build back better. Building back better. To do things differently. To build back better. We're gonna build it back better. And build it back better. This is my plan to build back better. Uh, start taking all the problems that have been created in right. education and mental health and start to, to build back in a positive way. I have launched a booklet called Build Back Better, Britain After Coronavirus. It's about building this country back better. Growing conspiracy following it. It is called The Great Reset. An unprecedented opportunity to rethink and reset the ways in which we live. The great opportunity for reset. The theory even calls Mr. Biden's campaign slogan, Build Back Better, a front for the conspiracy. Build back better. Building back better our economy. Build back better. All elements of the great reset are fundamental to building the future we need. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. It's a big effort to, some would say, to build back back better. We would say to really have a great reset. Conspiracy, conspiracy. Conspiracy. All right, so that's enough of that clip. But just to remind you that everything that you're seeing that's happening with the border right now in this thing called the border bill, and we're going to talk about the border bill, it is absolutely terrible. And of course, all the usual suspects are behind it. Chuck Schumer, Mitch McConnell. Um, Mitch McConnell is maybe one of the most dangerous and most evil people that exist anywhere in the government today. Mitch McConnell is corrupt. He is dirty. He has all these secret backroom meetings and dealings. Mitch McConnell is maybe, in my opinion, Mitch McConnell is perhaps the worst, most destructive politician that has ever sat anywhere in any office in the United States government in Washington, D.C. Now, his buddy, his best friend, is a man by the name of Chuck Schumer. Um, Take a listen to what Chuck Schumer says about the U.S. border bill that's being debated right now. Um, You won't like it, but here it is. We're at a turning point in America. This bill is crucial and history will look back on it and say, did America fail itself? Why is it crucial? Well, if we don't aid uh, Ukraine, Putin will be walk all over Ukraine. We will lose the war and we could be fighting in Eastern Europe in a NATO ally in a few years. Americans won't like that. If we don't help Israel defend itself against Hamas, that perpetual war will go on and on and on. If we don't help humanitarian aid to the starving Palestinians in Gaza, hundreds of thousands could starve. And the border, everyone has said it's chaos. A speaker, you just saw Speaker Johnson, he said it's Mm -hmm. chaos, we have to do something legislative a few months ago. But what has happened, in answer to your question, so this is crucial for America, it's a turning point. History is going to look over our shoulders and say, did we rise to the occasion? To his credit, Mitch McConnell did. But too many Republicans, including Speaker Johnson, 
are just scared to death of Donald Trump. Donald Trump has said he wants chaos. Donald Trump has said, well, wait till I become president. That'll take at least a year. Ukraine could be gone. The border will get much worse. War in the Middle East will get worse, maybe bring, bringing, bringing us into it. He's doing it all for political reasons. And let me just say, will senators, the crucial question, the $64,000 question, the majority of Republican senators know this bill is the right thing to do. It's a compromise. I don't like everything in it. Neither does McConnell. But it's a compromise. All right, so let me stop Chuck Schumer right there when he says that that bill is a compromise. When he says a compromise, this is what he means. A Senate bill will provide a measly $650 million to continue building a border wall at the U.S.-Mexico border while Ukraine will be sent 48 billion dollars in American taxpayer money. So Chuck Schumer is telling you that we're at a turning point and I agree with Chuck Schumer. We are at a turning point, but it's a turning point to decide who is going to uh, uh, be in charge of this country. Uh, When I was in school, they used to teach us that America was a country of the people, for the people, by the people. Remember when they used to call politicians public servants? Remember when they used to refer to the White House as the people's house? You could not get an audience in the people's house, even though you are one of the people who pay the taxes that keeps that house running. It is not the people's house. And this country is no longer a country for the people, of the people, and by the people. We have been taken over. America is now a corporation. And it is run like a corporation, like the way most of the Laodicean lukewarm churches are run. You don't see pastors behind the pulpits. You see CEO executives, and they make decisions like an executive would. And uh, America is no longer a nation of the people, for the people, and by the people. We are a country that has been taken over um, by shadowy figures and... um, Is it a conspiracy? It absolutely is. Is it a theory? It is absolutely not. So this bill that Chuck Schumer says represents a turning point for the United States is going to provide $650 million to build a border wall on our Mexican border. But it's going to send 48 billion with a B dollars to the nation of Ukraine. Now, we do not need to be involved in Ukraine's war with Russia two years later. Whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. And unless America is willing to send boots on the ground and put soldiers in that area, we have no business doing what we're doing. But we're doing it. And it seems to me that Chuck Schumer is almost implying that if he doesn't get his border bill, they're going to send American soldiers to Ukraine to fight Russia. That's the only way you get things important done in the Senate. We proved that two years ago in our bipartisan legislation. And will the senators drown out the political noise from Trump and his minions and do mm-hmm. the right thing for America? It's a crucial question. History will, is looking down on every one of us right now. Now, I don't know about you, but for the four years that Donald Trump was president, 2016 to 2020, our border was probably in the best shape that it has been in my adult life. Do you remember any border problems? Do you remember any attacks on American troops by Iranian proxies? Do you remember any wars that were started while Trump was president that America was forced to get involved with? Um, Look, Trump is the chaos president. He is the traveling circus. Um, And that's what he represents. 
But when I look back on the economy of his presidency, it was a great economy. Cheeseburgers, French fries, and a drink didn't cost eighteen ninety five. dollars So, this idea that all of these Republicans are against the border bill because they're in lockstep with Trump, uh, this has nothing to do with Trump. Now, this bill, this bill says that they're going to allow up to 8,500 illegal immigrants to come across the border every 24 hours. And when immigrant number 8,501 comes across the border, then according to that bill, it's going to trigger an emergency response and then soldiers will step in to secure the border. But they're allowing 8,500 illegals not to come in through Ellis Island like my grandfather did, but to sneak across the border in the dead of night. You know what that is? That is a crime. What do you think would happen to you if you snuck across the Mexican border uh, under cover of darkness and just started walking through the streets of some Mexican city uh, demanding that Mexico take care of you and uh, pay for your hospital bills and, and give you welfare. You know what would happen if you broke into Mexico? If you snuck across their border? You would be in a, a dank, dirty, dusty Mexican prison faster than you could blink your eyes, or maybe they would just shoot you. That's what would happen if you tried to come across the Mexican border going in the opposite direction. So this idea that America has to let in thousands and thousands and thousands of people every single day illegally through the back door. I don't know whoever thought that up. Whoa, wait. I do know who thought that up. That is something called the Cloward Piven strategy. Now, if you're a longtime reader of Now the End Begins, and if you've been listening to this podcast for any length of time, you have heard me talk about something called the Cloward Piven strategy. And basically and simply, the Cloward Piven strategy. It was created in the 1960s um, by these two university husband and wife professors, Cloward and Piven, and they came up with eight core principles of what you would need to have happen if you wanted to um, destroy America, if you wanted to bring it down from the inside. Abraham Lincoln famously said that a foreign army could never destroy America. And if America was going to come to its end, it would only be by things that took place internally within the country. So Abraham Lincoln very rightly said that America could never... Look, can you imagine America losing to Russia No. Can you imagine America losing to any Middle Eastern country? No. Can you um, imagine America losing to China in a military war? No. You could, and that is one reason why we haven't fallen yet. But if the people on the inside of our country continue to get their way and continue to chip at this country brick by brick, the thing is going to collapse. So let me just remind you what the eight principles of the Cloward Piven strategy to collapse America actually are. Number one, you have to control the health care. They did that. You have Obamacare that is government funded, crappy health care. I remember I had Obamacare for one year and I paid $1,200 per month. I had to go to the emergency room. It generated $2,000 worth of bills and Obamacare after I paid 
um, almost $15,000 in health insurance. My claim was denied at the emergency room. They wouldn't even cover a $2,000 emergency room bill. Obamacare is evil. It is bad on every level. So, step number one, you have to control the health care. Step number two, you have to increase the poverty level as high as possible. Step number three, you have to increase the debt to an unsustainable level. The national debt is now $34 billion, a trillion. Um, it can never be paid back. $34 trillion doesn't even exist. You cannot get your hands on $34 trillion. America is the most prosperous country on the face of the earth. And we don't generate anything near that even on a yearly basis. Step number four, you have to have take control of the guns. Step number five, you have to take control of the welfare system. You have to put as many people on welfare as possible. Step number six, you have to take control of what people read. You have to control the public education. Step number seven, you have to remove the belief in God from the government and from the schools. Now, we've told you for many, many years now, We've told you about the plan to take down all of these different things, these statues of uh, Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and Abraham Lincoln and taking all those things down. I got an email this morning from author Jeffrey Martis, and we sell his excellent books at the bookstore. If you have never read a book by Jeffrey Martis on the end times and the King James Bible, please go to BibleBeliever.com and um, check out the great books that we sell from Jeffrey Martis. They will absolutely be a blessing to you. Well, he sent me this link this morning and it says, Christians wake up hating Satan now a crime in Iowa. And we've all heard this story. Over the Christmas holiday, there was a veteran who knocked down a uh, a display that was put up by the Satanic Temple in the capital city in Iowa. And they put up a, um, a display of Baphomet, that is Satan, that is the devil. And they put that display up at Christmas time and this veteran came and he knocked it down and he destroyed it. It was a man by the name of uh, Michael Cassidy. He was quoted as saying this, My conscience is held captive to the word of God, not to bureaucratic decree. So I acted. They arrested him for destroying a statue of Baphomet, which is Satan. But every single day in this country, they are destroying statues of the original founding fathers and the leaders of this country, and they do that all day, every day. Step number eight. You have to have class warfare. You have to divide the people into the wealthy and into the poor. And what does that do? That causes massive discontent. So, when you read these headlines about the border bill, and when you go to places like X and Instagram and social media, and you see people talking about this thing called the border bill, Keep in mind that everything that is behind this open border situation directly relates to the Cloward Piven plan to destroy America. Look it up, Google it, call my bluff, but let me tell you something. I have been warning about the Cloward Piven strategy for I don't even know how many years. Sometimes I get tired of talking about it. 
but I have to keep talking about it because it is happening and you need to know what it is, where it comes from, and why they are doing it. The other night, last night on 60 Minutes, bombshell Chinese illegal immigrants are pouring across the border in record numbers. Why would Chinese illegal immigrants be coming into this country now? Take a listen to this from 60 Minutes. The number of migrants arriving at the southern border is unprecedented. Last year, U.S. Customs and Border Protection recorded two and a half million instances of detaining or turning away people attempting to cross into the United States from Mexico. So what's the fastest growing group among them? Chinese migrants. Yes, you heard that right, Chinese. We saw large groups, including many from the middle class, come through a four-foot gap at the end of a border fence 60 miles east of San Diego. The illegal entryway is a new route for those hoping to live in America. The story will continue in a moment. Just after sunrise, we saw the first group of migrants make their way from Mexico through a gap between the 30-foot steel border fence and rocks, ducking under a bit of razor wire and into the United States. We were surprised to see the number of people coming through from China, nearly 7,000 miles away. Yes, we were surprised to see the number of illegal Chinese immigrants that somehow made it from China to Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were a little surprised about that. Careful, watch. Our cameras, and at one point, this armed border patrol agent standing 25 feet away, did not deter them. So, how old are you? I'm 20 years old. This man, a college graduate, told us he hoped to find work in Los Angeles. He said his trip from China took 40 days. What countries did you go through? Uh, Thailand, Morocco, Ecuador, Ecuador, Colombia, Panama, Costa Rica, uh, Nicaragua. Jeez. 30 minutes later, a smuggler's SUV raced along the border fence and dropped another group at the same spot. And 30 minutes after that, another group. Over four days, we witnessed nearly 600 migrants, adults and children, pass through this hole and onto U.S. soil unchecked. We saw people from India, Vietnam, and Afghanistan. Now, keep in mind that the vast majority of the people from Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, China, and every place in South America, the vast majority, I would say about 93% of everybody who comes sneaking across our border are military-age young men in their 20s and 30s. Now, I have a clip about a man who has a theory about that. And in just a minute, I want to play that clip for you. And I want you to listen to what he thinks. And he said this on the Tucker Show the other day. And uh, in just a minute, I'm going to play that clip for you. And I want you just to hear what this very intelligent man has to say about the sudden influx in military age Chinese men coming across the border. Uh, But before we do, I just want to give you a quick update on the free Bible program. Um, uh, Alan sent me this email, and I read it yesterday on the Sunday service. And for those of you that didn't hear it, I want to read it again. And um, Alan is one of the the, uh, main people out in the Midwest who has helped us to get 
Bibles and New Testaments into jails and prisons and hospitals. And uh, God has really touched his heart, him and his wife, Kim, to get something done for the Lord. And he sent me this text message the other day. I think it was Saturday night. And uh, I was definitely in need of hearing some good news. And this is what the text message said. Alan said, we sent Bibles to Mike Fleming a few months back. He sent me this text message around 615. It blessed my heart. I wanted you to be as blessed as I was. God is so amazing. And this is what the text message from Mike Fleming said. I did a counseling appointment with a young man at Teen Challenge. I gave him one of your Bibles. I have four boys age 10 to 12 that I take to church and Sunday school. They all have a Bible that you gave to them. I give each of them a dollar and teach them about putting it in the offering plate. They are school bus children. And Alan says, Mike is doing a selfless job of running a church bus for the children and giving them the free Bibles from Now the End Begins. And then Mike sent a second text message. He said this, Alan, God amazes me with the great things he does. The task I have been given of the Lord for this bus ministry is way bigger than this old guy can do. It takes a team of people, and he's right, It takes a lot of people to do this. It takes a team of people which God is putting together. You and Kim are on that team. And then he said this, I hope to continue supplying Bibles to churches, counseling people, jails, and prisons. Can you get an endless supply of Bibles for me? That's a man out in the Midwest that I've never met. I only know him because Alan said, can you give this guy some Bibles? And I don't, I don't even remember how many Bibles we sent to him, but we sent him a lot of Bibles. And those Bibles are bearing fruit in a ministry with bus kids who would never have a Bible. And they have a Bible and they all have Bibles because you gave them those Bibles. And every time that you pray for this ministry and every time that you donate to help us with the free Bible program and the Bibles Behind Bars program, that allows us to continuing sending out free Bibles to people who need them all over America. So, Please continue to pray for the free Bible program. Uh, Please continue to pray for Bibles behind bars. And uh, we send out Bibles to prisons and jails all across the country. We have about 15 cases of Bibles right now sitting in the, in the uh, bookstore. And uh, we're getting ready to send them out to various jails and prisons. Um, But if you would like to help us to do that, please go to biblesbehindbars.com or just click on any donate link on nowtheendbegins.com and help us to continue sending out free Bibles. Uh, We need your prayers. We need your generous financial support. How much support do we need? As much as you can provide. Um, We spend tens of thousands of dollars per month sending out free Bibles. So whatever you can afford, and if God has prospered you, if you can afford $10, $1,000, $10,000, $100,000, we spend much more than that on a yearly basis sending out free Bibles and gospel tracts. So um, if, if you want to see this continue and grow, please go to nowtheendbegins.com. Click on the donate link. Everything here is supported by you. And we need your prayers and we need your support. And we need to keep sending out Bibles to people like Mike. Um, Can you get us an endless supply of Bibles for jails and prisons and counseling workers and churches? Um, I would like to be able to say yes to him. 
And if you support this and continue to support it, we will always be able to say yes to every request that we get. All right. And thank you for your support. All right. Let's talk about the Chinese migrants. Is there a plan to invade America? And if there is a plan to invade America, does that plan include people on the inside who are making it possible? That's the question that we're asking. Is there a plan to invade America? And if there is, are there people on the inside who are helping that to happen? One man thinks so. Take a listen to this. That there is an invasion taking place. You know, it's it's not a sleeper cell because it's on the move, but I started to think of them as sleepwalkers. And there's also a massive migration, and the migration is causing it is causing us to have difficulty discussing the invasion, which is a distinct phenomenon. And and different simply from desperate peasants from poor countries coming here for work. There was no desperation in evidence. And um, Michael also gave us a video, which I can't establish the origin of, but it it is a Chinese cartoon uh, set to happy music of a migrant moving through Central America, changing modes of transportation. And it basically indicates here's the route you will travel. Now, was it produced by the CCP? I can't be certain of that, but that certainly is suggested that this is a uh, a message about um, how to make this journey for what purpose, I don't know. But I do not believe that the people I encountered had left China without the knowledge of their government. I believe their government has some reason to uh, to have facilitated. But the administration must be aware of this. Our administration? Yes. It is, but here's the problem I've been wrestling with. It used to be that it was hard to convince people that our system was deeply corrupt. Back in the days when those of us who were focused on this issue used to talk about campaign finance reform. Right. right? It was a it was a problem, you know, that you could grapple with. It was of that scale. Now we have it's like a whole different level of corruption, right? And Here's the question that I've never heard a good answer to. What stops our enemies internationally from buying influence over our system in the same way that corporations do and did? I can't think of anything, and I've never heard Patriotism? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Sorry, just kidding. (laughs) Um, I don't think there is any such safeguard. And if there is such a safeguard, I would like to know how often it has been triggered. Certainly, our enemies will have noticed that we have a system that's pay for play. And it's certainly, I mean, it's perfectly in keeping with Sun Tzu, at the very least. It would be far cheaper, easier, safer from their perspective to um, persuade us to harm ourselves than to go to war with us. So... Again, I don't know. I'm I'm a biologist. I'm, you know, this is not my... Well, you're an observer of things. That's what the study I, of biology is, right? It is. And unfortunately, this is the most parsimonious explanation for what I've seen now, is that somebody has persuaded us to um, endorse a policy that is decidedly not in our interest. Doubtless you have seen Senator Dick Durbin of Illinois' comments in the Senate where you said, hey... We should let people who came here illegally join the U.S. military. What what does that make you think? Well, this makes me think back to the COVID crisis and some thoughts that I was developing then about the insanity of throwing highly trained people, in many cases, out of the U.S. military for refusing to take the so-called vaccines. Now, my sense at the time was that that likely had the purpose of getting rid of the kinds of people who refuse yes. moral orders. That's right. And that it created a much more compliant force. Now, what happens? So I'm going to stop that man right there. And his name is Brett Weinstein, by the way. And this is an interview, obviously, with Tucker 
one of the things that, that this man is saying is that everything that was done during the COVID pandemic was designed to make people more compliant, to remove any lingering resistance that you might have to doing whatever the government tells you to do whenever they tell you to do it. They threaten your job if you don't take the vaccine, so you take the vaccine. Then you lose your limbs, you get blood clots, you get myocarditis, you get a stroke, you get a heart attack, and the government um, takes no action of any kind. We have done story after story of people who um, were in the military or the medical profession who were forced to take the vaccine during the pandemic. They had some sort of horrific thing happen to them. Uh, I'm thinking about this one woman who was a nurse in Minnesota. And um, she was forced to take the, um, the vaccine. And let me just see if I can find this story real, real quick. Um, This was a nurse and she was from Haiti and she was forced to take the vaccine and she had blood clots from it. And um, she, she, she lost her, her, her feet. She lost her hands and uh, it was a really, really bad situation And uh, none of it would have happened if she wasn't forced to take this vaccine. And and I'll see if I can find that story in just a minute for you. Um, But suffice to say that part of what the pandemic was used for was to mentally remove any resistance that people have to doing what the government demands that they do. If migrants are given citizenship in exchange for military service in the U.S. military, that seems to create a major hazard because the perverse incentives for a migrant and the lack of allegiance to fundamental American values means that that would be just the kind of force that could be used to impose tyranny on other Americans because... uh, because they would have, you know, no history with us that would cause them to think twice. We've seen this before with the Roman legions. Um, That's exactly my conclusion. Um, Does that sound like a crazy conclusion? Uh, I think we have to stop punishing ourselves for considering things that once seemed crazy. But the pattern of recent (laughs) history... I'm sorry, I want to repeat that. I think we have to stop punishing ourselves for considering things that one seems crazy. Yep. Getting that tattoo. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I mean, this is where we are. And it it is, um, it's causing me to do something that I'm reluctant to do. My my training is as a scientist and scientists um, have to have a a substantial degree of caution and self-skepticism to do the work. But in order even to reach the possibilities that do fully explain what we're seeing, we have to be ready to consider um, consider the larger picture. So he says that you have to be ready to consider the larger picture. Now, what is the larger picture? The larger picture is that there is a internal government conspiracy in the United States to keep the borders open, to flood this country with illegal, with millions of illegal immigrants and to put them all on the welfare rolls and to make sure that what the Cloward Piven people wrote about in the 1960s comes true here in the 21st century. Now, I was talking to Chris Martinson uh, while we were in Panama. We were on our last day trying to just unpack what we had seen and what it meant to us. Um, Chris is also a scientist. And people can check this out on uh, the Dark Horse Locals community. Um, We've posted the entire conversation in which he and I reached some, I think we spooked ourselves, um, trying to reason through what this, this might be. And he reminded me of 
the uh, massive number of surplus males that China now has as a result. I was thinking the exact same thing as a result of the one one child policy. The one child policy. Now, here's the part that I uh, suddenly realized as soon as he reminded me of that. I wrote an essay years ago about the one child policy and the paradox of a heavy bias in favor of males. And the reason that this is a paradox is that there's a principle in evolution well understood. It's the result of the work of a guy named Ronald Fisher. And what Fisher realized was that although males and females can be very different in how many offspring they produce, and because a male could produce thousands of offspring in a lifetime and a female, if we're talking about humans, could, I think the maximum is something impressive like 60, but um, nonetheless, because males can produce a lot more, it seems that it might be evolutionarily advantageous to be one. But it's not because for every overperforming male, there's an underperforming right. male or at least one. And the result is that sex ratios, no matter how different males and females are in their maximum reproductive capacity, they tend to default to one to one. If you have a society that has too many females, you should produce a male. And if you have a society with too many males, you should produce a female, which tends to balance these things out. That logic should have applied to China. The fact is there were lots of excess males. And if you put yourself in the mindset of a Chinese person having a child, if there are too many males, you should want to produce a female. A male is very unlikely to find a mate. A female is certain to find one. And what's more, she has her pick of the litter. Yes. So that logic should have caused the sex ratio to return to 50-50, and yet it did not, which caused me all those years ago when I wrote this piece to wonder if there wasn't another evolutionary force in play. If evolution did not have a mechanism for producing armies, that when a, a country was in a position to expand that producing excess males does pay off at a lineage level that excess males who have no reproductive prospects at home become an effective weapon against neighboring populations so i can't believe that that did not occur to me as i was um, preparing for this trip but uh it has occurred to me now i guess it didn't occur to me because when i wrote that all those years ago, I was expecting to see evidence that this was turning into a military force and I didn't see it. So I stopped thinking about it. Um, but now I wonder if that isn't exactly right. And if what happened is that um, a male biased population in China was produced as a weapon. And if that weapon is now being deployed and it reminds so that's the question that Brett Weinstein is asking on the Tucker program. Is this unprecedented level of illegal immigrants coming across the American border, is an invasion underway? Is an army being prepared? Well, at the very least, at the very least, we can safely say that, yes, America is under invasion. I don't know how else you could describe 8,500 illegals being allowed to come across the border every single day, a quarter million per month, three million per year. If that's not an invasion, I don't know what is. Adolf Hitler only had 3 million soldiers in his entire army. And we have 3 million illegals coming into this country every single 12-month period. Um, so, is America under invasion? It absolutely is. America is being invaded. But, are the people on the inside... Are they orchestrating? Is this part of a conspiracy? Assalamu alaikum. Many other Americans have Muslims in their families or have lived in a Muslim majority country. I know because I am one of them. But my father came from a Kenyan family that includes generations of Muslims. As a boy, I spent several years in Indonesia and heard the call 
of the Azan at the break of dawn. I have known Islam on three continents before coming to the region where it was first revealed. You just have to flood a country's public square with enough raw sewage. You just have to raise enough questions, spread enough dirt, plant enough conspiracy theorizing that citizens no longer know what to believe. Once they lose trust in their leaders, in mainstream media, in political institutions, in each other, in the possibility of truth, the game's won. You just have... So there you have Barack Obama going all the way back to 2009, 2010. And we bring the show to an end in the same place where we started it today. The original graphic for this ministry, for Now the End Begins, that we created back in 2009, said, For generations the Bible has warned of the coming end of days, and you are now living in that time. America, a nation raised up by the hand of God to spread the gospel and to be a beacon of freedom for people around the world, is about to be forever silenced by those sworn to protect her, her leaders. And are we watching a betrayal of America from the inside, from the deepest, darkest halls of Washington? The answer, as D.L. Moody used to say, yes, yes, a thousand times yes. We are being betrayed by our own government, and there is no other conclusion that you can come to. Now, last week on January 30th... um. Pastor and preacher Jack Hibbs was invited to give the opening invocation to a session of Congress on January 30th. What he said caused a firestorm of controversy. What he said caused outrage in the halls of the Congress, the Senate, and the White House. Now, what could Pastor Jack Hibbs possibly have said when he gave a prayer to open up a session of Congress on January 30th, what explosive thing, what inflammatory words did Pastor Jack have to say? Well, take a listen and hear it for yourself. Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, together we come before you in humility as a people in need of your Forgiveness, your mercy, your goodness, and your grace. For these 250 so years, our fathers in this Congress have prayed for your guidance and protection. And so we stand here in humble petition that you today might do the same, that this nation and its unparalleled constitution, your great gift to all freedom loving people, might be renewed here and across this land as a beacon of hope to all who seek peace. I ask you today, Father, to bring to us a great awakening of righteousness and confidence in you, who alone is mighty to save. Hear my cry in this hour of great need that we might be humbly blessed before you in the repentance of our national sins. You, Almighty God, are the source of all wisdom, and there is no wisdom but that which comes from you. So please come upon those here who are the stewards over the business of our nation with your wisdom, which comes from above, and with your holy fear, knowing that your coming day of judgment draws near when all who have been and are now in authority will answer to you, the great judge of heaven, and of earth for the decisions that they make here in this place. I offer this prayer to you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Son, your Son, and our crucified Savior and resurrected Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I don't know much about Jack Hibbs. I don't follow his ministry. He doesn't ever come on my radar. I don't know if he preaches the truth or not. 
But I know this. I know that you mentioned the name of Jesus Christ and you mentioned the name of God from a biblical perspective and not from a generic perspective. And you're going to aggravate a whole lot of people. Uh, Washington, D.C. is founded by Freemasons. And there is more occultic symbolism in Washington, D.C. than you could possibly shake a stick at. Now, I'm looking in the chat room and Angela made me smile. She said, um, she said, well, this has been a depressing podcast. Keep looking up. And I will agree with that statement partially. Many of the things that we talked about here today are depressing. The fact that America is being betrayed by its leaders. The fact that it doesn't matter who you vote for um, because the new world order is going to have their way no matter what. Uh, Jesus says, said this, for now is your hour and the power of darkness. That's what Jesus said. He said, this is your hour. And it's time for the power of darkness. Now, what's comforting about that is that we have a Bible and we know how it all ends. And we know who the good guys are and we know who the bad guys are. And we have that beautiful, perfect, preserved word of God We call it the King James 1611 Authorized Version Holy Bible. And when you read that book and you believe that book and you do what that book tells you to do, nothing depressing about that. And in that book, the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And that book gives us light. It shows us where to walk. It shows us how to walk. And it shows us how to be circumspect in these end times. Paul says this, redeeming the time for the days are evil. And when we do podcasts like this, we expose the evilness and the darkness of the day that we find ourselves in. But let me tell you something. We have a mission and we have a ministry to send out the King James Bible, New Testament scripture portions, gospel tracts. We send them to dark places like jails and prisons and maximum security centers. We have sent out thousands of free Bibles to migrant detectives detention centers in Spanish so that they can read them. Yes, the news may be depressing, but we have a mission and we have a ministry from the Lord Jesus Christ. You know what the Bible says in Psalm chapter 68, verse 11? Psalm chapter 68, verse 11, and this is the verse for BiblesBehindBars.com. The Lord gave the word And great was the company of those that published it. You want to be great in God's sight? Publish the Bible. Send it out. Give it to as many people as possible. I got saved because somebody had a free Bible program and my dad took one of those free Bibles and brought it back to our house and put it in a place where I could find it decades later when I needed it. The news may be depressing, but... We have a job, we have a mandate, we have a mission, and each and every one of you are invited to join us on this fantastic journey through ministry as we continue. Last year, at the end of 2023, we passed 250,000 free Bibles, gospel tracts, New Testaments, and scripture portions that we had given out. Help us to do this. Join with us. The war is real. The battle is hot. And the time is short. To the fight, people. To the fight. And with that, we've come to the end of our time for today. I want to thank you so much for being a part of the NTEB family across America and around the world in 157 different countries. And we are glad that you are standing with us, praying with us, and praying for us. Um... No Bible study on Wednesday night. I have been invited to preach at a church, and I 
the Lord just worked it out that that's what we need to do. So please pray for Lorianne and myself as we travel to this church on Wednesday night and we're going to preach the gospel and we're very excited about that and just to see what the Lord would have for us there. Um, so we'll see you back here on Friday, noon Eastern time for another Prophecy News podcast. Have a great week, everybody. To the fight! Their country loved and mercy more.